All right. Um, man, so I was uh, – to go back, when I was younger, I was like a little street kid, you know, I was like in the hood. We're here in South Central LA. Back then, the hood was way more crazier. Uh, I was really, really into fighting. I would watch UFC. I would watch some certain boxing. I would watch a lot of fights. And uh, I remember when I was like 14, I was like, I want to be a fucking fighter one day. And I started training in my backyard, my mom's backyard. We didn't have mats, so we would put blankets on the floor. And then we would use socks as gloves. And me and my little brother would fuck each other up in the backyard, you know, on blankets. And then, you know, I chased it for a while. When I stopped doing the hoodlum shit, I kind of started focusing on training for a bit. I got a little better. Uh, but then, you know, relationships, you kind of get distracted, yeah? Yeah. Uh, and I kind of like for like four or five years, four four years, I kind of lost that little hunger of wanting to be a fighter. You know, I was uh, kind of just coasting it. And then like, and then, you know, when something bad happens, it's not just one fucking thing. It's like everything. So at that fast forward to what was going on, I was 215 pounds. Um, I was in a big debt for rent. Uh, I was obese. Uh, my, I was losing my apartment. Uh, my girlfriend of five years decided to up and leave like when it was like tough and uh, moved out while I was in Japan, came back to an empty house. I was like, fuck, you know, and I told myself I have I could do two things. You know, I could do two things. I was like, I could go back to my bad habits and just get fucked up and meet a bunch of girls and numb myself or. I could chase my dream. I was 31 at the time already. I was like, I could chase my fucking dream. And I was like. I'm going to allow, it happened on September of 2019. I told myself, I'm going to allow myself to be depressed and bummed for the rest of the year. And then New Year's, I'm going to chase my fucking dream. And I announced it on Instagram for like 400, 300 followers. I was like, this New Year, I'm chasing my dream. I'm going to become a bare knuckle boxer. Everybody, dude, I'm talking about everyone. Dude, you're too old. You're too fat. You've never been in a gym. You've only trained in your house. And I was like, watch me fucking watch me so i started training again in my mom's house with trash bags over my body and like just like a sweat more and i started going every day and started focusing on my diet 10 pounds 20 pounds 40 pounds 50 pounds became 95 pounds lost wow um and then i see that bkfc has a tryouts for the for the public and i'm like all right dude i'm at a good weight i think it's like the trial to in Arizona, I'm going to, I had almost no money on me. Um, I was starting to give lessons in my apartment. I made my game room because I was a fucking game nerd. I made my game room into a gym. So I have like four bags hanging, a speed bag. I have a reflex bag. I have, it's a big room. And I started training people there um, during the pandemic. So I had like a hundred bucks left. I remember. And BKFC trials were in Arizona. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking go. I'm going to do this. I, this is my chance. I buy like a fucking $65 round trip ticket, show up to Arizona. Sorry, we're in the hood. Welcome to South Central. I know you can hear that. I <laughs> love the soundtrack. <laughs> I know you can hear that. This is, this is legit. Like, we're in the a couple of them. So someone's getting chased. Shh. We're in the interview. Shh. So, um, you know, I go to Arizona. I remember showing up with my brother and just being like, we just got to fucking give it our all, you know? So I'm fucking doing my weird style. I know that's different. And, you know, at the end of the whole tryout, coach, one of the scouters comes up and he's all like, you know, 30 people showed up. Out of those 30, 20 are good. Out of those 20, 10 are professionals. And out of those 10, only three shine. And he's like, and you're one of them. Who are you? And I'm like, oh, my name is David Ernesto Diaz. Like, who's your trainer? I'm like, uh, me and my brother train ourselves in the backyard. And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, nah, did we have to come talk to Nate Shook. Start talking to Nate Shook. And he's all like, oh, yeah, we're giving you a fight. So I was like, all right. Um, I announce it. People start getting hyped. Uh, I hit this up. This was going to be like your first. Ever. Not your. Yeah. Okay. Like, my, I mean, ever. I was going to say your first fight, but I'm sure you've fought before, just not in the <laughs> ring. <laughs> I'm assuming. Ah, I mean, you know, uh, those are, those are, those are, that's another story. Uh, so they, um, 
I have no trainer. I'm still training at my house by myself. We're like five weeks away from the fight. I hit up Joey Beltran on Instagram. Uh, he's a Chicano fighter, former Bellator UFC fighter. He's an OG. And um, he's a BKFC heavyweight champion at the time. And I hit him up on Instagram. And I'm like, this she's not going to fucking answer, you know? I'm like, hey, man, uh, I'm a Chicano fighter from LA. I'm getting a shot with BKFC. I have no coach, no trainer. Um, he's, I'm like, can you, then you could coach me. I left that one part. When I went to go do the tryouts, I was injured, which is why I gained so much weight. And my settlement came in. So I had some money. And then on top of that, um, no, wait, the rent forgiveness program happened first in LA. And I was chosen out of a few people to cover my whole depth of rent. Right after that happened, uh, my settlement came in. So every like, and then I got told that I was going to fight in BKFC. So everything that was like, shit was like, yeah. So I hit him up. I'm like, Hey man, you know, I, I, I need a coach. And I didn't think he was going to reply. And I get a fucking message. If you're serious, come to Miami. And I'm like, fuck, I have like $5,000 left from that settlement from everything. I'm like, you know what, dude, this is my chance. Like yeah. I'm never going to have this chance. So I fucking go to fucking Miami. I remember I show up the first few days and I do like his one hour training with him. And he kind of just looks at me the third day. He sees that I start showing up two, three times a day and he's there all day. And he just, one day I remember I showed up like the third or fourth day and he's just looking at me like, and then he's like, Hey, come over here. We're going to do something different. And he started actually coaching me. And then we had a, we had like, all, we became fucking homies, man. He like helped me with my mental. And I remember he says, you know what? I'm going to fucking corner you. And I was like, let's fucking do it. And they give me a guy that supposedly was 9-0, nine, nine knockouts. Okay. He was the next Conor McGregor. He was wow. all hyped. They were hyping him so much. And they didn't give me no fucking hype. So I told a few followers, I have, hey, what the fuck? Go tell these dudes. Like, what's up? So they went to the BKFC page. People start talking shit. Like, what about the Mexican dude? Like, why aren't you guys? Mm -hmm. So they send a camera dude to uh to Miami. They send a camera dude. And I do my first fucking interview. And one line, like, stuck. It was, uh, it was I went to the BKFC tryout, spent most of my money. And then I ate a couple, a couple of noodles for, like, two weeks, which I did. Like, my diet was a couple of noodles. Dude. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> training on cup of noodles can't it, be great. It fucking work. So, <laughs> so clearly, <laughs> they give me the fight. We get fucking hyped. We're like pushed to pay per view the first fight on because our fight was fucking hyped. I go in there and we have a fucking war, dude. Uh, we had a war and I fucked them up. And then, you know, the name just kind of was like, who the fuck is this fucking. Chicano South Central, dude. And then people started finding out. I have no trainers. I just started working with Joey Beltran four weeks prior to the fight. It motivated a bunch of people. And I started getting a bunch of messages. And I went from being this fuck up. Like for me in my head, it's, you know, you're always your worst critic. I was always like the black sheep to my head. I was always like the fuck up. Like, fuck, what am I doing with my life? To like motivating people in the hood, which is so hard to accept in the first few months that first year that it happened i was just like nah dude like i'm just a, just i just gotta my i just gotta fight and it was uh they i had to learn how to accept the responsibility that came with that you know it was a uh, it was being someone's motivation i have a bunch of young dudes here they're like dude i went back to training or i started drawing again and i'm just like fuck you know i always when I was super depressed and suicidal, I always, always wondered what was my purpose. You know, I was fucking up and everything. And I um, think this is it. You know, you know, I tried to kill myself three times. I couldn't do it. And I was like, why am I still alive? And I think this is it. It's to become a fucking champion and to help the hood out.